So I decided to take the existing white LED out of this LED rechargeable uh, work light and replace it with a green LED. So I've got a suitable green LED in the star package because keep in mind this isn't really running at very high power. It's, it's just about two or three watts. And having now removed the heat sink, it's interesting to note that there are two deeper sections here which correlate to where they've drilled and tapped holes for the existing... Uh, square LED, the sort of the 10 watt style LED. However, I'm putting two new holes in because they don't really match the uh, position of the holes for holding the star in. So I've already drilled one of them. I'm about to drill another and to drill it and tap it, I'm using a generic eBay. Oh, let's see. I've got another one up here. I've got a generic eBay uh, combined drill and tap. So let's uh, do this one now. So I'm just going to drill down. Take it slowly. So that's it now, drilled and tapped. And uh, because uh, I'm putting them in the centre here, I'm oh, not perfectly central, but good enough, uh, I've drilled into, deliberately I've drilled into this channel in the middle, um, because the unfortunately the drills and taps I got were, it, it's a combined unit, so it has to drill through, and then the tap's quite a bit further along, so the screws will be protruding through the back of the heat sink very slightly. I'll just uh, sweep this aluminium off. So let's attach the new LED. Now, keep in mind that if this is going on like that, the connection at that end will be the... So it'll be negative at this end. Not actually, it doesn't really matter, because I've got both connections effectively at this end. OK. That'll do. So I'm going to get a bit of heat sink compound now. And I'm going to screw this on. Uh, and I'm going to use two 3mm screws. Three M3 shoes, screws, should I say, plus I'm going to use two fibre washers. These little red fibre washers that uh, are good for providing extra insul insulation. So let's uh, just put a tin little blob in the middle of heatsink compound. I've dropped the lid off this. I'll have to find that later then. Oh well. I'm going to place the LED in position, like this. Then get a suitable screwdriver and pop these screws in with the appropriate spacing, well, appropriate insulating water. Washer. Washer. Oh God, I'm all over the place today. Someone recently mentioned that my hands look all sort of veiny. Uh, that's just unfortunately blue collar hands. If you have a friend who works in construction or engineering, just take a look at their hands and you'll notice that they tend to be quite, shall we say, chunky and uh, they've got prominent veins on them and sort of rough skin it's just because the the human body just adapts it uh, makes it just uh, makes it suit whatever the work you're doing your hands just sort of evolve is this actually going to I'll find out when I start putting the reflector in I'm wondering now if that's going to stick up too proud. I wonder if those screws are going to stop this going in. I guess there's only one way to find out. I can always change them for the original shorter ones that it came with before. So now I've done that, this is the point that I could have put uh, some silicon sealant round here. But it's a bit of a one-way trip because the silicon sealant, if I put it into this trough here to seal this, then it, the screws actually protrude through it and they will get locked in. And I'm not overly bothered about that, to be honest. So I'm just going to slip this together like this. This is the point I could actually desolder this LED. I'll float some uh, fresh solder onto that first, I think. I'm looking around for fresh solder. I had a bit of fresh solder. I was using solder momentarily briefly. There it is. So let's pop the original LED off. Silicon sleeved cables they've used. 
in the anticipation that the LED is going to get red hot, which it obviously isn't running at just one or two watts. So just out of interest, let's push that down there and see if this is going to fit in or if I'm going to have to improvise. That's pretty good. That's pretty good indeed, actually. Is it hitting those screws? It is hitting the screws. Do I change them? I think I will, to be honest. It's not going to take that long. That's these screws here. I'm pretty sure they're M3, so I'll just pop one out. You'll also notice I've used a sticky plastic to cover the, the wound. Just mainly for uh, you guys, because uh, you probably don't want to see gaping wounds. So let's see if this is going to fit in okay. Others were commenting that it looked quite a serious wound. It's not. It's just typical what happens, particularly this time of year. Uh, I tend to use my hands as quite powerful vices for opening things and gripping things. So it just, uh, you know, when you get a cracked knuckle like that, it just uh, the, it keeps cracking. It just takes a while to heal up and then just suddenly randomly does. Part and parcel of work. So this should be better. So now I've done that, I shall uh, put the screws back in that hold this together. Hold the heat sink on. I tried this light outside uh, at night time and it was really good. Uh, although it runs the LED at fairly low power, just 2 or 3 watts tops, uh, it puts out enough intensity of light to light the foliage in the garden well. If you put it in front of a tree, it, uh, it's very impressive. A short tree, obviously, I suppose. Depends where you are. Uh, I live in the Isle of Man, so uh, the ambient illumination around here is pretty dark. It's, it's not very bright at night at all. Uh, we do have some street lights in the street, but uh, just one or two, and they go out at one o'clock in the morning. To save power, presumably. Right. Let's uh, attach these wires again. So this one is going to the negative terminal. Let's put a bit of solder onto that. This is where it might be quite tricky to solder because of course it's on a heat sink. And then I shall put the positive on, which is going here. The option here I have is to change the resistor as well, but I'll leave the existing resistor. Technically speaking, if uh, the green is going to be much more efficient at putting out the green light, because that's all it puts out. So theoretically, uh, if it was bright enough, I could actually tame it down a bit with a higher value resistor, and that would result in longer battery life. This is just experimental. Having said that, it should easily get about three or four hours runtime. So technically speaking, that's going to light now. Yes, it is going to light now, bright green. Okay, let's uh, put this reflector back on and see how it fits on. It's not touching the leads, that's good. Yep, yeah, it's got good clearance and it's not perfectly centred up, but it's centred up well enough. Yeah, it's fine. And then all that's required after that is to put this together and then uh, try it out. Uh, I'll leave that screw loose until I've put the other ones in. Try it out in the garden and I shall record a little bit of video of it in the garden lighting a bush. Uh, so you, you guys can see what it looks like at night. All depends again how the sensitive the camera and the iPad is, because uh, nothing beats the human eye for sensitivity. I have to say, if 
I was walking through a park and there was just one of these pointing at a tree. It would look spectacular at night because uh, although it is low power, it's, it doesn't take much to light the green foliage of a tree. So let's uh, put this seal back in. I like this seal. This seal goes in so well. Uh, give this a quick wipe on my jumper. Press it in. And that's fundamentally it. All I need to do is put the cover back in this and uh, put it back in. That's me got a green LED floodlight. So uh, yeah, I shall try this out this evening. So here it is lighting a modestly sized bush and it looks pretty good. What you can't see is that as I pan up there, there's a tree above it and it's actually quite well illuminated too. But um, it's doing a great job of the bush in the ground. Uh, I wouldn't actually increase the value of the resistor though because that's about right. It's quite pleasant uh, level illumination. It just accentuates that sort of green foliage. Uh, going dimmer than that would just be, you know, I'd rather actually just double the battery capacity than reduce the intensity because this is about right. Maybe two or three watts is ideal for a little garden, garden spotlight.